Right now I'm getting all the shipping caught up and done and getting my bag ready in the morning, three in the morning, I'm driving to Vancouver, hopping on an airplane and flying to Toronto. I'm flying to Toronto to bring you guys a video of the e-axles being tested. They're there, they're hooked up and uh, they're undergoing their testing. So that's gonna be super cool to see. And you guys look forward to showing you. Just got to Vancouver here. I'm about four hours early for my flight, which I don't mind. I got an email last night that my flight has been delayed. One thing that Chase and I have to do when we fly out of Vancouver is we have to park in long-term parking because our tr pickup trucks are too high and we can't fit in the underground parking. But since I got a little bit of time to spare, I'll show you some things that I brought. I don't even get a carry on you. You're allowed one personal item thing. At Edison Motors, we fly super budget. We didn't even pay for me to have a bag. I got a gimbal for the, my camera, charging cables. These are batteries. I got GoPro battery cases, mounts. And Another GoPro, the GoPro that I'm using right now. I have a t-shirt. I brought one t-shirt and one pair of underwear. That's my clothes. Memory card readers, charging port, my toothbrush, deodorant, some medication, a Nikon camera, which we're gonna send back for warranty. The autofocus is wrecked on it. I have a shotgun microphone and then I have another microphone for my GoPro, extra batteries. And that's it, that's my bag. I'm going on a trip and I have one bag that's small enough that it doesn't even count as a carry-on. Oh, and I have a battery pack so I can charge things if I need be. So we're gonna go and catch the train, the Sky Train, to the airport from the long-term parking. So I don't forget, I'm in row 17. And of course, I just got another email saying my flight is delayed again. So now I'm five hours early. Oh well, better early than late. So I don't know if any of you non-Canadians know this, but the Canadian government during the lockdown was pretty proactive about uh, recommending uh, Canadians use glory holes. And uh, it, it's nice to see that at the Vancouver airport, there's actually what I assume is a glory hole waiting for you as soon as you get off the, the train to get to the airport. And of course I got flagged with all my batteries in my backpack. So I had to get sent over for an extra searching. Went through all my stuff, give it a swab. A little delay. So as I sit in the airport, Literally on the airport run, I'm having lunch and I'm editing videos. Chase does text me here. Bad news, they can't get the axle spinning due to battery issues. They need all eight batteries. It turns out not just four of them. We kept four, we gave them four. They can show you everything else though. We gave them four batteries and we kept four batteries so we can install them and they can test it. But I guess that the four batteries we gave them wasn't enough and they need eight batteries to get the axle spinning. We've already paid for my ticket and I'm already flying there. And it turns out that I'm not gonna be able to see the axle spinning. So I guess we have prematurely bought this flight. I guess I'll make the most of it and I'll, I'll introduce you to the people at Flodrolic and what they're doing anyway. Really disappointing, super disappointing tax to get. Like I have been overly excited to see this to the point that I drove to Vancouver to catch a plane to fly across the country to see this. And now we're not going to, but I guess it's just out of our control. No one knew that. We're learning as we go. There's a lot of problem solving and troubleshooting that goes into this. And uh, unfortunately, we bought a plane ticket. So this is a pretty expensive uh, trip to Toronto to do an interview on Flodrolic. But I guess it is what it is. Just one curveball after the other here. We, it seems that we take uh, one step forward and two step backs a lot of the time. I guess they're gonna be shipping the e-axles to Edison on Monday. So in like a couple days now, just because they're gonna have to have the axles hooked up on the truck now to get them spinning. So that has sped up the progress of getting the axles to Edison, but it kind of negates the fact that I'm flying to Toronto to see the axles in action. Who knows, every time our positives turn out to be negatives, our negatives turn out to be positives, so this could really go anyway. I guess maybe it'll speed things up. Put dogs in and send a bunch of guys out with the axles. Now we're gonna have more help at the shop. So I made it. I'm in Toronto. Just got off the plane. Jumping in the taxi lineup. Taxiing my butt over to the hotel. I lost three hours on this trip. For the last 19 years, I've been working crazy long days behind the wheel of a truck. One month ago, I hung up my keys and I started full time at Edison Motors in media. Yesterday, I got up at 3 a.m., drove to Vancouver, had three flight delays, flew across the country, and got to my hotel 15 hours after I left my house. The hours were the same, but the job is different, and I'm loving it. Today, I'm catching a cab across Toronto to take a picture, film footage, and tomorrow morning, I'm getting up at 3 a.m. to fly home. 
Next week, instead of driving, I'll be hanging out at Edison Motors, filming things as they come up, and working on making a video with the footage that I've filmed on this trip. Along with that, I'll be handling business emails directed at me, running a merch store, running a YouTube channel, as well as monitoring multiple social media accounts, answering questions, screening comments, etc. Life is one hell of a ride, and I'm enjoying the change. My name is Chris Passmore. I'm the Director of Technologies at Flowdrella Controls. I run um, and manage anything that has to do with electronic or electrical engineering. Flowdrella Controls has been around for about 40 years, and we've always focused on work truck hydraulics, um, mobile hydraulics, and then around the year 2000, we started to shift quite a bit more into electronic controls of all those work trucks. And then about, about 15 years ago, we started to focus on high voltage electronics, automation, um, and how all of that marries in together. When we first met Chase and Edison Motors, um, they were still working on Carl, and it was still pretty new in that design, and we saw the potential right away in that, that, that marriage between our two companies. So we tried really hard to help uh, consult and work with Chase. I mean, um, Edison Motors knows what they're doing, and they know, they know high voltage very well. Um, but on, on part of that interesting space is that mobile element to it. And all we've ever done is build things on wheels. So um, we were able to bring some of that expertise to them and sort of help guide them through that process a little bit. And with Edison's know-how and their absolute tenacity, when, after Carl got built, we were able to turn our focus then a little bit further on the front end and say, okay, now that we've got this prototype well underway, how are we gonna build a real truck for the real road? And I think that's where a lot of that marriage and cooperation came in. If you look at the path of Flowdraulic over the last 10 years, it's really interesting that we've done a ton of focus on mobile work trucks, a ton of focus on propel applications, and have always been inter interfacing with chassis. The chassis market is really interesting because it's pretty much all designed for long haul. And what Ch uh, Edison Motors is doing, which I can get really excited about, is that they're working on that work truck market logging trucks, snow plows, concrete mixers, vehicles that are gonna get beat up and they need to work in really harsh conditions. And Flodraulic, that's all we've ever done. Anything off highway that's getting power washed, it's getting dirty, it's vibrating like crazy, that's always been our space. So when Edison Motors and Flodraulic started to work together, it made perfect sense. We have spent countless hours in factories with manufacturers trying to get some sort of body to communicate and work with some sort of chassis, where that chassis was not meant to do that, and this body is purpose-built for one reason. Now with Edison Motors, the goal is gonna be able to work with these body manufacturers and chassis manufacturers like Edison Motors and marry those two together with an almost plug-and-play solution. Imagine you're a snowplow manufacturer, and, and you develop this body, these blades, and all this technology, and if you had a chassis that just rolled in here ready to be a snowplow, that means you would have all your hydraulic connections, your PTO connections, your electronic connections, ready and plug and play. Then you get in the cab, and when you turn this truck on, it's a snowplow. It's got the armrest controls for your blades and your salt. It's got spread rates on your LCD screens. It is a truck made for you, designed in that purpose. There is a huge gap in the market for this, and and customers are gonna be thrilled to be able to walk into their shops and reduce dozens and dozens and dozens of build hours per truck. We're basically going for a pretty close to like a glass cockpit control with all our LCD screens. And we want those LCD screens to be not just for the chassis, but for everything about what that truck does. So if, if a, a manufacturer plugs in their, their snowplow, they're gonna be, oh, I'm a snowplow, I'm a snowplow today. And now all, of the screens will be snowplow specific information. It'll still give you a road travel and stuff like that, but if you have a, a salt spread or if you need to put direct liquid application, all those features are just built into the truck. If uh, the next person plugs it in and it's a, um, a garbage truck or let's say a dump truck, suddenly it's going to be, um, oh, I'm a dump truck today. And now those LCD screens are gonna tell you the angle of your bin. It's gonna have the controls automatically there to lower and raise it. Um, and then same thing if it's say a garbage truck, you're gonna know what your packer's doing, what your sidearm loader's doing, if it's a bin tipper. Um, all these experiences we've had and all these manufacturers we work with, this chassis is gonna know what it is and it's gonna work accordingly. Back in the day, basically, if a chassis shows up to a manufacturer, it's a long haul truck maybe with some extra uh, vocational capabilities. So you're gonna have to literally rip apart the dash of the truck, 
You're going to need to find different wiring. You're going to need to upgrade and add switches. You're going to need to mount a backup camera. Then you're going to need to mount um, maybe an LCD screen for your shift logging information. You're going to need to mount all these external components. And it really just looks like a truck that you slapped a bunch of different products in. And now the goal is it's going to look like a truck that is built for that purpose. I guess you don't really know what you don't know until you know it. And one of the big things that we were not prepared for was um, there are eight battery cells in this design application. So what we did is four went to Edison Motors and four went to Flowdraulic. Turns out as part of the battery management software, you need all eight to operate. Um, so what happened is, although we have all four and we can do a lot of testing, we can't, can't get full voltage out of those. So as much as a test bed is a really good pro, uh, place to test your software and to make sure things are working right, it's never going to be real world. And one of the things we learned is that if we're on a run of four battery cells, we're not going to be able to get that battery management system to push out full voltage. So as we're testing our e-axles here, uh, it's become clear that some of that, um, some of that control element can't be tested here. We're going to have to test it on the truck. But it turned out to be a really good learning moment because we only got four batteries here and now that we know that it doesn't work, we're actually getting um, new software written to be able to run this thing with reduced battery cells because that's gonna really maximize uptime in the field. Five years from now, this truck's gonna be somewhere and we're gonna lose a battery cell. And because of this lesson, we're gonna be way more robust in the field because we'll run off of reduced battery voltage, but we'll keep running. We, we sent an email to, to the developer and right away they were like, huh, never thought of that. And that's where we're getting a lot of this, right? Because electric vehicles are so new and all vehicles are designed for long haul. Not, what if I run into a highly remote area, it's minus 40, I'm on a rattling road, and literally I snap something off the back of the truck. Yeah. The questions they get are like, would that happen? It's like, that's gonna happen every day. Yeah. And we need to be ready for it. Will it happen, yeah. Yeah. Like today, you mean? Exactly. Right. Maybe. Yeah. So right now, we are in a really exciting time. Uh, at Flow when it comes to the Edison Motor project. We've got our test bed, we've got batteries, we've got an e-axle, and our whole power distribution unit on the headache rack is complete. We're almost finished our test benching here in the building, and the next steps are gonna be get that over to BC, um, get all that installed on the truck. We're gonna be sending uh, five to seven engineers and technicians on site, living, breathing there. And everything ships out tomorrow, and everything arrives at Edison in about two weeks. Everything gets installed for about a week, um, and then we got uh, seven people flying over to BC August 14th. And then we're going to be there till August 28th, and the goal is this project's finished August 29th. I don't know if I've ever worked with a company who's going to get to an end point, hell or high water. I think that their ability to pivot and their ability to think fast on their feet has been incredible and such a breath of fresh air. We love a company that's willing to work fast and pivot and be... Um, very quick to market and no one does that better than Edison Motors. When we're taking a look at like what the other electrical vehicle manufacturers are doing in the market over the last call it five to ten years and what we've been able to do in 18 months that is unparalleled in the world. I'm, I'm always saying Chase. I mean Eric is Amazing. Well, well really, with important. any of the electrical stuff, it is, it's Eric. I feel like I feel like maybe I, I feel bad. I might try to mention his name. He deserves a million pounds of credit for all the work he does too. He is he is happily a silent okay. behind. I just felt bad. I said Chase like five times, and Don't I guarantee you, Eric. No. Eric's right there, right? Would you be willing to um, the the other like one person? I would love to have this a bit of, and he doesn't. He's not as annoyingly talkative as me, anyways. But Steve Hogg. I cannot underscore enough the fact that this project, this project does not happen without Steve Hogg. He is our Eric Little. Um, he is knowledgeable. He's he's completely like understanding like the requirements of the customer. All of the core design, all of the core design of this application from Flowdraulic's perspective came through Steve Hogg. Hey there, uh, my name is Steve Hogg, and I'm a systems designer for Flowdraulic Group Canada. I've got a background in control systems electrical systems, a little bit of hydraulic knowledge, and a little bit of software development. Edison Motors is a up-and-coming company. They're innovative, ready to pivot. Chase and Eric know what they're doing. All the guys over there know what they're doing. What we provide to them is a partnership, a little bit of the 
bigger company professionalism and assistance on some of the more minute details, because they have so many aspects of the truck to build, we can focus on some of the smaller details while they're looking at the bigger picture. Building an electric truck is not an easy undertaking, I would say. Edison has done an excellent job to get to this point and we're working through new challenges every day. There's so many different components from different manufacturers that you need to integrate together. They all have their unique set of quirks and we need to work through each of those point by point. Throughout the months, throughout the weeks, we are going to keep addressing individual points. Just now we find more quirks with the batteries, but we'll keep working through them. You need all eight batteries connected, which are two sets in parallel. You put them in series to get up to the voltage, but then you have two different sets of four in parallel to get necessary current. We have four here for testing and we didn't realize it would throw a blocking level fault code if only half of them are connected. Well, that's why we test. We always are looking for as many potential issues ahead of time as we can. We can see that there's this issue, we'll connect up, it's going to go away once we're on site. Regardless, even knowing this issue, we wouldn't do anything differently. We still want to find out as much as we can on the communication front, on the faults front. There's as many advantages as we can get ahead of time, we will take. Fundamentally, the Edison Motors vehicle is a truck body with nothing unique about it from a vocational perspective. The bodybuilders don't want to look at this as a unique challenge. They want to view this as a standard truck that is electric. This gives us an opportunity to really prepare to make this both easy to integrate with, but also be forward thinking and provide some of the technology that will mate well with a garbage truck or a snow plow or what have you. Edison Motors is, this is their truck. We are a close partner, a good partner, but fundamentally this is an Edison Motors vehicle and we are the integration partner involved mostly in electrical design and software development. All of the components on the driveline side, on the battery side, selected by Edison Motors and it's my job and our job to integrate. All right, let me show you the shop. First up is the engineering room. The first stop is our gender. Our Jigger has handled um, a ton of our user interface design for um, Edison Motors, and he's going to kind of give a, a quick show of how some of that works. Hi, uh, this is Harjinder here. Um, I work as a sales co uh, engineering coordinator uh, for Floridolic, and I'm pretty excited to show you what I have for Edison. So these are the charging screens. So this is what you will see when the, plug, uh, the truck is plugged in or is charging. Uh, as soon as you turn the key on, uh, you're sitting in the truck, you turn the key on, this is what your uh, splash screens are going to look like. Both will stay Edison Motors. Uh, these are the initial, just showing you the animations here, but these are the uh, actual animations that you'll see on the truck. The left screen is driver focused, drive focused. You'll see air tank levels, uh, fuel levels, general temperature, your estimated range, your engine RPM if the generator is working or not, and then your speed as well. The right side of the screen is all about battery management services. Um, you'll see battery uh, state of charge, uh, what the combined estimated range is, even your consumption chart uh, from the last past 15 miles. Um, uh, if you want to see how your individual components are doing and if you want to diagnose something, you can click on the diagnostics and this is what your diagnostic screens will look like. So here's your DC to DC, here's your battery, here are your motors, axles, here's your engine uh, and here's our, your uh, uh, OBC. So let's say uh, in, in a situation where you are just driving just with the uh, battery, this is what your animation is going to look like. So power flow will uh, go from batteries all the way to your drive axles. Um, uh, if your batteries are not uh, charged enough and if the generator kicks in, your generator is going to charge the batteries and then batteries are going to go and uh, power up the E-axles. Um, in a case where you're doing regen, your axles are powering up uh, your batteries. So this is what your, your animation is going to look like. The screens will also have um, your I.O. It'll show you the tier 4 faults, uh, your fault codes, your previous and your current fault codes. It'll also show you, uh, it also has settings to change your consumption chart range, also your units. Let's say if you want something in metric. So you click on metric and everything will be changed into metrics. So miles will change into kilometers. You can change your screen brightness. Same thing here as well. You have here too. 
so you can change your units here as well and um, same IO here on the same screen as well so you can pick and choose which screen you want to interact or IO um, you'll have fault alerts as well so let's say if you have a fault high temperature warning there will be a pop-up that will come up uh, in just a few seconds so this will be your pop-up. This is something that we are very proud of. These screens are IP67 certified. Uh, this, these are versatile touch screens. Um, and again, they're, they, they look, uh, they're gonna flank each side of the driver and they're gonna look amazing. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Jerome Tika. I'm one of the uh, technical support and uh, programmer here at Flodoric. And this is one of the uh, display for the Edison truck. It's uh, completely a uh, touch sensor, a touch screen. It is uh, completely programmed in the C language and so all the graphics that I received from uh, Harjinder, I compiled them on uh, using the C language to uh, make this display possible. Right now we are on the main dashboard. Uh, I'm going to simulate a message uh, coming from my laptop so you can see the, uh, all the bars and the speed uh, gauge. So on, the, on this display, you will see all the, uh, the air on the tank level for tank 1 and tank 2. Also, it will show you the uh, temperature for the generator and how much fuel uh, you are left. You, you can also see how m the speed uh, the truck is traveling. And there's also a, a graph here that, that uh, you can visually uh, see uh, down the bo at the bottom here. When this display is uh, connected to the truck, you will see uh, the total miles, estimated range, engine RPM, battery, and air pressure. You will also see like error messages popping out if there's some. And to go to the uh, main menu, just press there. Settings, you can, we can uh, adjust uh, the brightness of the screen. Also change the unit to Imperial. So right now, it's in Fahrenheit and miles per hour for the, uh, the speed. So outside of engineering, now we're going to head into our production area. Anything electronic or electrical gets handled in this area here. So this is a more typical power distribution unit you'll get in electronic equipment. Something we've been doing quite a bit of is, is subway maintenance vehicles. So as you can see, we've got a lot of bus bar, um, a lot of high voltage circuits here, and high amperage. This one here actually runs about 2,500 amps. This type of technology and, and being really robust in this space really helped us with the Edison project. Lessons learned here, we were able to implement on the lessons learned over at Edison. So anyways, we have 18 job cells here where we do um, all kinds of high voltage or low voltage control panel design. Those vocational trucks that we talked about, you'll see all sorts of versions of them here. You'll see garbage trucks, you'll see chain trenchers, you'll see um, snow plows, concrete mixers, a lot of construction vehicles, cranes. Um, it doesn't really matter the area, so long as it's rugged, mobile, moves, we're going to do a lot of work. So now we're headed to our Edison Motors yeah. test area. Um, it's, it's where we're going to take all the batteries, the, the BMS system, the headache rack with the PDU, and our E-axles, and we're trying to put it all together to see if it works. It should work. To see how it works. How it works. So this is our headache rack and power distribution unit. And just like I showed you in the other application there, there's a lot of lessons learned in our previous applications that made us uniquely poised to be able to really apply um, those same lessons into this application. This is the power distribution unit typical of a battery electric or hybrid electric vehicle contained within a headache rack. You can see contactors, you can see custom machine bus bar, you can see high voltage fusing, pre-charge components all controlled within the microcontroller. Within the center compartment of the headache rack, we have a couple different Edatron converters. These are focused on controlling the generator, DC-DC conversion between the battery and the rest of the components, as well as the controller for the electric braking. It's all high voltage, high voltage meaning the 600 volt network on the truck, controlled locally from within the headache rack. All liquid cooled, the connections aren't done yet, but it will all be connected to the glycol on the truck. So because of our uh, learning experience with the four batteries versus the eight, we can't get full voltage to the E-axles in this building. But part of the, the design importance here is communication between all the various components. We've got E-axle controllers, we have the whole power distribution unit, you have battery management systems, and all of that communication, both one direction to get the information, 
and sending, which you would call bi-directional communication, is critical. So part of our setup here is utilizing um, motion of the e-axle to make sure that we're getting all our communication across the system. So Michael here, as well as Steve and uh, Jeff Newfeld have developed some, a bit of a rig here to be able to test that. So that's our facility. I hope you guys liked seeing it. Um, you've seen how we're going to be designing all our user interfaces. You've seen all of our test bench platform for the Edison product. Um, you've seen some of the team that's going to be working on it. And next stop, Merritt. You're going to see us more there. Great, Chris. There we did. Thank you for your time. No problem. We did it. We did it. <laughs> that was terrifying.